All right. Um, we have a quiz coming up here in just a few minutes. Quiz 25 over sections 20.1 and 20.2. But these seniors in here had their junior senior fellowship uh, on Friday evening. They've had a weekend to forget everything. They had Easter weekend. And so because they were so focused on our Lord's resurrection, they did not take the time to study. And so they're not ready for the quiz. So we're going to review and then we'll get them ready. If you've been watching and you just watched the last lesson, you're probably fine with the quiz now, but hey, extra review can't hurt anyway. Uh, so let's go and talk about uh, what we looked at in sections 20.1, 20.2. We've been talking about how light changes direction. We call this change in direction class. Refraction. Refraction. And what causes any wave, including light, to change direction? Okay, going from one medium to another in which the second medium causes the light or any wave to speed up or, speed up or slow down. But the change in speed causes the light uh, to change direction. And uh, we say that light then must travel at different speeds through different media. The, uh, obviously, Kendall, light doesn't go through Kendall, right? Um, the uh, ghost shrimp in Miss Morse's tank, light does go through ghost shrimp. Okay, um, but not through not through Kendall uh, because ghost shrimp class is transparent, transparent roughly, and uh, most of them there's parts of them that aren't. You can see his little organs in there, little bitty. Um, but anyway, um, but uh, he's transparent, so light can go through him. So when we talk about light changing speeds, we're obviously referring to transparent media, and a transparent medium's resistance to the transmission of light waves or light rays is called a transparent material or transparent medium's resistance to the transmission of light rays. Obviously, if it's transparent, it does transmit light. Light goes through it, but it resists this transmission. It slows down light. What do we call the ability to slow down light? Hmm, optical density. Optical density, resistance to the transmission of light rays is optical density. And uh, optical density is difficult to quantify unless you compare the speed through a medium to the ultimate speed, speed through a vacuum. And that comparison, that ratio of speed of light in a vacuum to speed through a particular medium is called refractive index or index of refraction. The equation for this number is n sub m equals c over V sub M. Again, the optical density affects this V sub M, the speed through the medium. C, of course, we'll assume to be 3.00 E8 meters per second. And the V sub M is whatever it is. It's always E8 meters per second. Light travels really fast through all transparent media. Though the most optically dense medium is a diamond. diamond. But even through a diamond, it's going through it at E8 meter per second. So it's still traveling really, really fast. The meters per second in both cases, and the E8s for that matter, will cancel, leaving us with the refractive index. Now, of course, if the second medium was also a vacuum class, the refractive index would be... C and the equivalent of C, when they cancel a division, you get... One. Right, so one would be the lowest refractive index. That would be for a vacuum. And then uh, other media go bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually diamond is the biggest. So then we have there the refractive index. No units on refractive index, remember. Uh, we said that as light slows down, or as any wave slows down, what we're talking about light, as light slows down, it bends or refracts in which direction, class? Toward, Toward the normal. And we saw that with... Um, the, uh, the laser beam going from air into the water the other day, um, where we could see the laser beam coming in and then it kind of changed direction downward, more pronounced. Uh, if light is able to speed up, it refracts away. away from the normal. We saw that as well with the uh, light starting, well, just barely through air a little bit, then into the water and then going back out into the air. We got to see the waves refract away from the normal. Um, so the angle of incidence does not equal the angle of refraction. All right, true or false, angle of incidence equals angle of refraction? That would be false. Test coming up in lesson 150 for these students. It's in about a week. Um, but uh, in that test, you will see that. No, false, lies. The hey, angle of incidence does not equal angle of refraction. Rather, I can find the angle of refraction based on the angle of incidence and the refractive indices of the two media. What do we call that first law of refraction? It's named in honor of the Dutchman who discovered this relationship. 
Snail. Snell's Law. Remember, not Snail's Law, Seaborgium, the snail. No, Snell's Law. And what is the Snell's Law, first law of refraction equation, Audrey? Mm -hmm. Hmm, Kendall help. That is part of it, but she left off something important. The uh, angle sub one. Good. The refracted index of the first medium times the sine of the incident angle equals. M sub two times the sine of the angle of the refraction. There we go. So what is it, Audrey? Uh, M sub one times sine of the incident angle equals M sub two times sine of the incident. Refracted angle. Angle of refraction, there we go, theta sub r. Okay, so remember we said we have to compare, think about, okay, what's the first medium, what's the second medium? Make sure we put the refractive indices in the correct spot. Uh, we need to figure out, okay, was it the it refracted angle or the incident angle given to me? Put that in the correct spot. If we're finding an angle, we're going to end up using the arc sign, remember. We practiced that on a handout. Um, if we're finding one of the in, in, uh, indices of refraction, then we'll already know both angles, so we'll just take the sign. Do we need to see a problem like this work? Do we remember it? Uh, well, let's try that. I can ask two contrasting questions there. Does anyone want to see a problem with this? Now, we all feel good about it? All right. So uh, I guess if you're watching on YouTube, you're like, I don't feel good about it. Gavin's like, I got a test. No, ask a question. I got a quiz. Ask a question. If you have a question, before you take the quiz, make sure you uh, ask for maybe an extra problem. Or at least go back and look at a handout or replay. I guess if you're watching on video, you could always replay previous video. They can't do that right now because they're stuck here. All right. Uh, so uh, first law of refraction. Second law of refraction. Uh, it was a lot like the second law of reflection. What did it say? Anyone? They all lie in the same plane. Yeah, they all. Meaning the incident ray, the refracted ray, and the normal all lie in the same plane. Good. Um, we talked about mirages and all that stuff and how different things look like they're in different places. We also said that um, if the light is uh, able to speed up because the second index of refraction is smaller than the first, maybe we've got glass going to water or light going from glass into water, maybe water into air or from some kind of a crystal into air. If the second medium has the lower index of refraction, you're going to get a greater refracted angle. Light goes away from the normal. Until eventually, if you continue to increase the incident angle, the refracted angle would also be stay bigger and bigger and bigger until at some point you could get an incident angle that produces a 90 degree refracted angle. What do we call the incident angle that provides a 90 degree angle of refraction? The critical angle. So remember, that was another form. It was basically the same thing, but we, instead of calling it the incident angle, we called it the critical angle. And because the sine of 90 is 1, we said that n2 divide both sides by the n sub 1. This gave us our equation for the critical angle. And uh, do we need to practice with critical angle math, or do we remember doing this? All right? So the critical angle, again, produces that 90 degree refracted angle. Now, any incident angle greater than the critical angle, no light refracts at all. Instead, all the light stays in that first medium. Phenomena called? Three words. Total internal reflection. Class, what is that? Total and we got a chance to see that the other day with the light rays totally internally reflecting on the surfaces of the media. Again, it comes to the boundary, and instead of going out into space, going out into the air around it, the light stayed trapped in the water. Um, we talked about the diamond can, keeps total internal reflection and fiber optics. We looked at the uh, fiber optic waterfall, uh, which wasn't really fiber optic. It was just water. But anyway, it was still cool. At least I thought it was. I liked it. Um, that's what really matters as a teacher, as long as I'm having fun. Anyway, um, no, in all seriousness, though, if you're wanting to become a teacher one day, that's what I tell teachers. Hey, as long as you're having fun, the class will enjoy it either at your expense or they'll enjoy it with you. But you just have fun up there and make sure they're learning something. Um, most of the time, except when you're picking on them, and they're just learning how to get picked on. All right, anyway, I move on. Uh, what do we call a transparent object whose surfaces are not parallel? A transparent object with non-parallel surfaces. 
a lens. Again, a window is not a lens because the surfaces are parallel. Even a curved window, as long as the surfaces remain parallel, that same distance apart all the way, it's not a lens. Once you get to a point where the surfaces curve differently or one surface curves and the other doesn't, for instance, at the base of a piece of glass. Remember, uh, way back in chapter five, we talked about how glass over time, some people call it a super cool liquid because it slowly seems to form these ripples or folds at the bottom. Okay. Some people also say this just imperfect cutting or imperfect molding, but whatever. If glass isn't perfectly, if the window isn't perfectly formed, right there where you start to get that distortion, now the glass is functioning as a lens. Talking about all different types of shapes of lenses or six different shapes of lenses. So really though, what it boils down to is, what does the lens do with light? If light rays come in parallel and they pass through the lens and they spread out from each other, because we refer to that lens as a diverging lens regardless of the exact shape. And if when light rays pass through the lens, they all come together and then spread back out, of course, that's called a converging lens. The converging lens causes the light rays to come together. The diverging lens causes them to spread outward away from each other. For a converging lens, then, the light rays come together at a particular point called the focal point. Whatever the distance is from the lens, to the focal point, technically from the optical plane of the lens to the focal point, that distance is called the focal length. The focal length is from the optical plane to the focal point of the lens. Now, um, this focal length really depends on a couple of different things, right? It kind of depends on the shape of the lens, but more so, it all, well, equally, it depends on what the lens is made out of. We had an equation called the lens maker equation. We worked a lot recently, um, and it helped us to see how to find the focal length of a lens. What was that lens maker equation, Michael? Um, Started with one over F. Mm -hmm. Equals N minus one. And then one over R1 minus one over R2. There we go. Both radii of curvature for the two surfaces of the lens and the index of refraction all play into that focal length. And so we can't necessarily, like a mirror, just say, oh, focal length's half the radius. Well, no, because what's the lens made out of? What is the second radius of curvature going to be? Uh, we looked briefly at some ray diagrams. We didn't do them in the class. Uh, we'd look at some ray diagrams and pointed out that we have three principal rays we could use class. We have the uh, Parallel ray, central ray, focal ray. And so as light passes through the lens, assuming the light does pass through the lens, um, the uh, central ray simply goes through the... The center, but the what center? There's two words. Optical center, good. With a mirror, we had a center of curvature, the center of, lens, of uh, uh, center of curvature through which the light passed. And then we have an optical center for a lens. The reason I make sure we make that distinction is because in the test coming up in lesson 150, um, we will have both lenses and mirrors together on the same test. So we want to make sure we keep those straight. But the, uh, the uh, central ray just goes through the optical center. No refraction at all because it's already going through the center of the lens. Um, the focal ray passes through the focal point, or really the secondary focal point, and once it reaches the optical plane for our purposes, it will refract parallel to that uh, main line called the principal axis, the principal axis. The final ray was the parallel ray, of course, that would start out running parallel to the principal axis, and once it got to the lens, it would refra refract through the focal point. Good. Um, and so we said that we could track where different images would form. Um, we said that for a converging lens, there are six different cases of image formation. And for the diverging lens, there's only one. Diverging lenses always produce what kind of images? Virtual upright, reduced images. Virtual upright, reduced images. And so right now I see all of you through a diverging lens. We're going to talk about this uh, after the quiz, but I have diverging lenses on. And so all of you still look like you're over there. You don't look like you're here. That would be really weird, right? Okay. It doesn't appear that you're on this side of the lens with me. You still look like you're out on that side of the lens. You're all upright. That would be very unfortunate if y'all were upside down. Now, 
Well, we'll save that for the discussion after the quiz. All right, so it would be really strange if you all looked upside down. And uh, also, you all right now look like you're about the same size you really are because my eyes are so close to the lens. As the lens gets further and further away, Kendall looks smaller and smaller. Audrey looks smaller. Michael looks smaller. And for that matter, as you look through the lens, I look smaller, don't I, through the lens. Okay, so um, again, it, you don't notice as much if your eye is really close to the lens, but as your eye gets further away, the image appears to be that much smaller as well. So ver diverging lenses, glasses lenses, which helps those of us who wear glasses because we understand this. Sorry, Kendall. Diverging lenses, class always? All right, but for the converging lens, this is what we got to play around with because they actually produce real images that travel through a lens and form real images on the other side, which we could catch on a poster that's is the back side of the poster. Um, but we said that if the object is uh, an infinite distance away, though, for an object an infinite or practically infinite distance away, what kind of image is produced? Mm -hmm. Just a little bitty point image right at the focal point. Uh, however, if the object is closer than that, but still double the focal length away, or well, really more than double the focal length away, what kind of image was projected? Real, inverted, reduced. If the object were brought closer and were at double the focal length. Real, inverted, unmagnified. And that was where, ladies, we were trying to catch the image the same size. And okay, that, now it looks like it's the same size. That was at that double focal length away. Sorry, Michael. Picked up two bad days to be sick. Um, glad you're better, though. Um, and uh, let's see. We said for if we brought the object closer than double the focal length. Real inverted enlarged. Now again, it also got further away, so the image got bigger and bigger and bigger, and we had to keep moving that poster further and further away to get it in focus, until eventually if the object were placed at the focal point, no image is produced. And uh, of course, if we got closer than that, you still wouldn't get an image produced, not a real image at least, not on a poster, but if you then looked through the lens the other direction, we could now see the image behind the lens, meaning it was a Virtual. virtual image, it was now upright, upright and magnifying. enlarged, right? Like a magnifying glass would be. All right, questions on cases of image formation. Um, lens maker equation was the last thing. We already gave it to you here. Remember we said for the lenses, the two radii of curvature affect things, but we have to consider rel relative to the object where, where the radii would be. For instance, if we had a double uh, convex lens. Okay, so here's your focal plane. This first surface, or this surface here class, the first surface I drew, is actually considered surface two if the object is over here, right? Because this is the surface away from the object. This surface is closer, so this would be surface one. Just like for my glasses, this side is surface one, this side is surface two because it's away from you. Um, and the radius, if we took surfaces two, surface 2's radius, where would it form? To the left or to the right? Mm -hmm. It would form to the right, wouldn't it? And it'd be pretty long. We would call this radius 2 because it's the radius of surface 2. If I took surface 1's radius, where would it form? To the left or to the right? Mm -hmm. It would form to the left. It would be a little bit shorter, wouldn't it? And we would call it radius 1 because it's the radius of surface 1. Radius 1 would be positive or negative? It would be positive because it's away from the object, where radius 2 class would be negative because it's toward the object. So we need to account for all of that. I recommend drawing sketches when using the lens maker equation. Make sure we get the radii in the correct spots, R1 versus R2. Make sure we get them positive or negative correctly. Make sure we subtract, not add. And of course, the n minus 1, we just take the 1 off the refractive index. When you figure all of this, take the reciprocal at the end to get the focal length. Do we need to practice with a problem like this, or was the practice in previous lessons sufficient? Where are we at? We good, or we want more practice? Good, good, good. All right, any questions? Oh, quick sign convention. Focal length could be positive or negative, just as radius could be positive or negative. Focal length could be positive or negative. What is a positive focal length? Tell me about the lens. It's converging. The light really goes through the lens. It does what we'd expect, and it actually focuses. A negative focal length Diverging. It indicates that the light seems to focus on the same <laughs> side of the lens, which would not be natural, and that would make it a diverging lens. All right, questions on this? All right, we'll go ahead and take a quiz. Clear desk, except for a clean sheet of paper, pencil, and calculator.
Only sheet of paper, pencil, and calculator. First let's name at the top of your paper along with today's date. <clears throat> it's a beautiful day, and so we've got the windows open. <laughs> so it's not a beautiful day for somebody. Somewhat. I mean, I, I guess you heard a little. It's hard to catch the pitch drop, though, when the siren's fluctuating and when we're not moving, too, and you just hear that one thing passing. But you definitely hear it getting quieter, that's for sure. Um, if the siren gets stuck on one note, then you could hear the Doppler effect really nicely. Um, it's always a good sign, a good sign when the siren goes past you, right? When it gets louder and louder and louder and never softens. Is it my building? <laughs> the other end of the school is in flames. My kids. All right, anyway. I got morbid really quick. Let's go ahead and put first and last name at the top of your quiz, along with today's date, which is 4-10-23. 4-10-23, and this is quiz 25. Quiz 25. Well, let's take a look at the quiz together, and then I will end this video. We'll pick it back up after the quiz with the recording. Uh, numbers 1 through 7, short answer, answer the questions, uh, and the numbers 8 through 10, uh, solve the problem, show your work, show sketches as needed. All right, any questions before we begin? All right, you may begin.